Welcome back, everyone. My name is Susie Kim. This is a newly shaven Wolf Schroeder, and we are back for week number six of the WGL APEC Asia Season 1 Gold Series. Really excited to get back into this. Uh, you know, we had a little bit of time over the weekend before these teams came back here, coming in on Monday, and we've got three matches today. Looking like some of them might be one-sided, but still, a good day for tanks today, and we get to see some of the top-level teams, even if the matches end up being one-sided, we get to see the best teams play really, really well. We really, really do. I mean, we have teams like B Gaming, we have EL Gaming here, and, I mean, it, if they're not the best, come on. I mean, I, I don't know what you've been watching, but we, we've obviously been watching this, and EL Gaming has been showing some pretty, pretty strong games. But before we go in, we're going to introduce to you, in case you're just tuning in, um, how the WGL format works. So, basically, here we go, the WGL APAC Asia Season 1 Gold Series. We are casting from Seoul, South Korea. Schedule started on June 1st. Like we said, we are six weeks in. Yep, six weeks in. Uh, we've gone through our second, uh, you know, the second time for these teams to play against each other. Already we're starting that, so everyone's played against each other once. We're going to that second part of the double round robin. Here is our maps. We've got Himmelsdorp, Steps, Ruinburg, Ghost Town, Mines, and Lakeville. And our point system, three points for a win, two points if you win through tiebreakers. And if you lose on the tiebreaker, you still get a point. But if you lose ordinarily, you get zero points. So it's very important that if you're going to lose, you at least make it to the tiebreaker. Every point counts. We see so many of these teams in the middle of our rankings are so close to each other. Yeah, we will get to the rankings in just a minute. But, uh, I mean, this is basically the way that things have been going on for the last five weeks now. And uh, all the teams are starting to find their their, their places. You right, know? right. We're starting to really see where these teams are. Speaking of the teams, let's list these off. B Gaming and Karen Tiger representing Japan. Elong, the best teams in the world, the best team in Asia, currently at the top of the rankings. Horsemen, we've got the Immortals, Run, Team Efficiency, and the Coalition Singapore. So, eight great teams. And even though, like you said, we're starting to figure out where these teams' places are, everyone has shown us a unique and different style. And that's what's really cool about this. Thing. Absolutely. It is a lot of fun to watch, you know, certain teams have an amazing SPG player or another team where you know they're all just going to rush in all together as a pack, you know. Yeah. The uh, the different types of strategies that each of the teams are showing us really shows us their character and it's something that we've been able to observe over the last five weeks. Absolutely. I mean, it's really, really cool to see some of these teams' players come out and show us what they're good at. Here's our rankings currently. As I mentioned before, Elong all the way at the top at 21 points, but Karen Tiger just one point behind. And of course, their other Japanese team, uh, you know, representing the same region essentially here, seven points behind. There's a huge disparity between the top two teams and the middle teams here. There definitely is. I mean, we can definitely, okay, for, so first and second ahead of the pack. Then third through fourth, oh no, I can't, three, four, five, six. Basically all within like a point or two from each other, which means one win can definitely just change these uh, rankings yeah. up. And unfortunately, we have TCSG and Run still, um, they're, they're still, they're on the board, which is great, but they're still kind of a little short of uh, catching up to their uh, fellow teammates. Yeah, and a little bit of uh, maybe a lesser known fact is Elon Gaming actually missed one of their matches. They actually DQ'd one of their matches and they still have one of their points. That's Pretty nuts, actually. It's actually out of control. They've never lost a match, and they've never gone to tiebreaker. The only match they ever lost is one they just simply did not show up for. Yeah, and I, I know Elong did try to troll a few games, and they have lost a, a few maps here and there, but they have been on point and very strong this entire time. So now let's get into today's matchups. We have Run uh, versus B Gaming. B Gaming really wants this win. If they could go ahead and try to match the points as uh, the other Japanese team, Karen. And Tigers. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a very important win for them. To be able to beat Run should be a task that's very, very much in their eyes. Probably an easy one to get those three points. Now, going to the second match, Horseman versus TCSG, we're not actually going to be able to see this match. Unfortunately, for personal reasons, TCSG actually has forfeited the match. They are disqualified. But our third match is definitely going to be the best one of the night. Not only because Elong is playing, but the Immortals might be able to take a few games here, give them a run for their money. They're a very strong team representing Vietnam. I believe you on that. I mean, they have been showing us some strong, strong games, and again, Immortals one of those teams on their on day, they are on. But uh, we're gonna have to see if they could bring their A game, especially as they're playing against the top tier team. We have Elong uh, versus Immortals for match number three, and the tiebreaker map. If any of the games get to go to game number nine, will be on steps. 
have a map that does uh, favor Elong quite a bit. It's uh, where they made their style, and they're obviously the best team possibly in the world, but in Asia at least. Yeah. Um, no, no question on this map. So they're probably pretty happy that that's the, the way the we The tiebreaker yeah. one. Uh, I guess so, but... All right, well, I mean, we are just going to wait for these first teams to to get ready yeah. and into the thing. We have, uh, like we said, Run versus B Gaming. Yeah, we might take a look at some other team rosters here to see uh, what their players are. Actually, no, I take it back. Looks like the game's ready. All right, well, we're going to go straight into the first game then. It's going to be on Ruinberg. All right, everyone, here we go. To start off the night, we have Run versus B Gaming, and B Gaming will be on the defensive first. All right, let's look at these tanks really quick here, Susie. Two AMX 5100s and four T54s for Run. They're running a T37, a T37 on the side of B Gaming as well. However, instead of running four of those T54s, they're bringing a 1390 and also an IS-3. So they're basically, they're still running two auto loaders, but they bring an IS-3 instead of another lightweight. So much more varied tank lineup for B Gaming. Now, Run's job here on this map, on the attacking side, is essentially to safely get out of the city and then get into a good position to get that outer capture point. Yes, I agree. And I like that the choice of having an IS-3, especially on the defense. I mean, this tank is so heavily armored that it's, uh, it provides great cover, especially if running with... Oh, gosh, speaking of Run, uh, already members of Run are getting, you know, their HP... Just, just chipped away. But what I was going to say is, it's nice when you see the the uh, I, the IS three with the auto loaders, um, giving them some cover so that they could do maximum uh, damage. Yep, yeah. a uh, bonsai attack taking quite significant damage actually, but does survive. Uh, and Keith trying to get in a good position here Scyther as well. Scyther is taking some damage as is Neep, but Scyther is going to be focused down. It seems Karaya and Neep are both kind of on there, but yep, there we go. Scyther is down. And already Run Gaming is down one man. Yep, and Neat Mania in a good position to use this auto loader here. Keith is on the run. There goes another shot. Karaya taking him down. A few more hit points. Keith getting very, very low here. Karaya will need to pull back, but he's got support here. Cognac Wine falls. Keith will fall as well. He gets one more shot up before yeah. he's killed by ramming. And B Gaming takes a massive lead here. Kelvin takes another shot from this IS-3. Wow, the IS-3 actually just working on its own. He doesn't even need the auto loaders around. He's going to try to finish off the job. Kelvin is going to try to run away, but with 8 HP, I don't know if he's going, to, if running away really is going to do anything for him. Nope. Nope. It did not. Like Nipa it. is able to take him down. Blackhawk is the last man standing, and he yeah. is a 91 second reload time. Yeah, it looks like he uh, may have had a problem with his turret there, so just too much damage on that tank. And now, 7 millimeter just trying to ram him to <laughs> death right here. He knows he has no, <laughs> he's on reload, so he's just messing around. Wow. Nepo will finish him off, and B Gaming will take the first win on the defensive side. I wanted to see his stats on how much damage 7 millimeter did in that game on the IS-3. <laughs> he just sat out there and never missed a shot and hit every single shot he fired. He just hit he took the T-37 down to no hit points, and as soon as he realized that it, it was going to be low, he didn't even want to waste his shot there, turned his shot on the lightweight tanks, then on the 5100. Really good accuracy on 7mm. Yes, they were ahead, but this guy was the hero. He was out in the front, absorbing damage and dealing damage. It was insane. I, I, I kind of wish I had more analytical views on it like you did, but all I saw were a ton of tanks just blowing up at each other. Um, Run Gaming, I feel, Run, I feel could have been a little more patient. They did yeah. just kind of run in there, literally, um, just met B Gaming head on and got their tanks exploded. Well, this is, this is something we've seen from Run in the past like quite a bit. Um, it's their namesake, almost essentially, <laughs> is they like to run in and try to take fights where their opponent, while their opponents are in the setup phase of the mm -hmm. game, where they're trying to get into defensive positions. And as they're setting up, sometimes you can surround them, have, have a 4v1 or a 4v2 or even like a 5v1 fight, pick off a tank early, and then snowball that lead, snowball that advantage where you have a tank advantage, so of course you have more firepower, and eventually win the game like that. We've seen them take sets here and there against some good teams with this type of style. The consistency of this strategy, though, is pretty just non-existent. Right, right. I mean, I, I don't even know if we can call it a strategy, really. I guess it's the whole, sure. like, catch them off guard strategy. But once they get past that, it almost feels like they can't follow through anymore. Right. It's, it's, it's very much, um, it's very aggressive. And, yeah, it's almost like there isn't much strategy to it. It's just, let's hope we catch them. 
Let's hope we catch them. Hope is never uh, something that you can rely on at the top, top level of any <laughs> sports title, especially not World of Tanks. Of and course. That's why the better teams are not playing that style, and that's why they're winning. All right. Well, it looks like they are all ready to go into game number two. So here we go. Set number two has begun, and again, B Gaming is on the defense. Let's see if they've changed anything up. Nope, both teams running the exact same tank lineups here, Susie. All right, I'm just hoping that Run will play a little bit more passively. And uh, I don't know, I feel like if they paid a little more passively that they would um, have a bit of an, not an advantage, but at least more of a chance. Oh, I absolutely, I, I mean, it, it, the thing is, the question is, are they bad at that style? Because we don't ever really get to see them do it, so we don't know. But it seems like they're not confident playing a longer game. They're not confident playing that type of style. And if you're gonna run with all these lightweights up here in the front, if you get spotted, you're so vulnerable. Obviously, you can see Shima here has already spotted everybody. Now they just yeah. need to get into position. It's four lightweights and a T37 lightweight. All these tanks are very weak to autoloader damage and good positioning. Nipa right. takes some damage. Well, the entire team of Run, again, just, just running their way right into this little village town outside of the city. They're gonna try to take out tanks one by one. I mean, it seems Ooh. that they're having a little bit of a time. Wow, Neat Mania does go down. This is exactly what they want to do. They want to target down these autoloaders if they can find them, if they can get that fire on them. Neat Mania being gone is so much damage lost for B-Gaming. Especially because they're only running one IS-3. They don't have much of a, a blocking tank to protect Super Hiroshi here, who is doing some very nice damage. They're blocking him with two T-54s, which is going to get the job done, but it's not ideal. No, it is not. But you know what? This is actually a pretty good positioning for Run. They're going to surround B Gaming right now. Pariah is going to go down. The focus fire could, is a little messy, but you know what? It's doing the job. And looks like three... Members of B Gaming are left standing. It's all about positioning here. The IS-3 absolutely can carry this fight if it's protected by the lightweights, if they help distract. But Shima here is going to go down. Looks like he takes someone down with him. 7mm, if he can hit that shot on uh, Wii 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that would be great. And he does. He gets him off. Wow, up. but 7mm also takes incredible amount of damage. That was critical shots after one, one after another. And now Bonsai Attack on the T-37 is going to be the last one left. Run's tactic actually worked out this time around, and they're going to go ahead and take set number two. They tie it up here. Wow, and I'm actually really surprised that worked. The, the idea here is definitely exactly as I described it before. Take a fight where you surround these tanks while they're in their setup phase. They got Nipa. Nipa's on the AMX 1390. Yeah. You lose that guy early on. That's so much damage. Oh, sorry, it was Neat Mania that they got. Neat Mania goes down, and uh, you lose that all other damage, and then suddenly you're out of... A ton of damage on this tank that could be any other type of tank, but this is vulnerable AMX 1390 that gets killed very easily, and then the fight snowballs against them because they don't have the damage put out. Even with Super Roshi on the 5100, he was able to fire all of his rounds on the all-loader. He was in reload as he blew up, so mm -hmm. it was like he did exactly what he needed to do, but they needed another damage dealer. The IS-3 does some decent damage, but not when it's surrounded because it reloads so quickly, it cannot fire quick. Right. It's not an auto-loader. It can only fire one round at a time, and with that 11-second cooldown, you're not going to be able to eliminate several lightweight tanks that are kind of swarming around you like sharks. That was really well done. Um, because they didn't get picked off super, super early, you're right. They did find B Gaming, where they're positioned, and I think I think the game changer was the fact that they were able to get Neat Mania first, get rid of that autoloader. The 1390 goes down, and they're able to just, like you said, swarm around like, like sharks around a piece of meat. Yeah, something like that. It was a frenzy. So, sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you. That's the word I was looking it's a, for. It's a frenzy there. Uh, it, it got out of control really fast. But yes. now we're going to see sides swap, and uh, obviously on the defensive, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Run to play that type of style. Are they really going to try to rush into the city to meet the tanks as they leave? I think it's much uh, better to sit up defensively, as we saw uh, B Gaming do in that last game, because that's how this map is played in most standard senses of, of you know, strategy I'm and tactics. I'm trying to think, have we ever seen Run play on this map and actually strategically place themselves? The only time I've ever seen Run strategically place themselves was like, where they strategically place themselves versus TCSG on mines when mm. they're on the defensive. And about after they were set up strategically, defensively for about 10 seconds, then they all just attacked together. <laughs> um, but they ha they do know how to do it. They absolutely can, could, you know, surprise us here and, and do this sort of style. But 
if they try to rush into those streets, into those narrow places, don't think it's going to go well for them. At the same time, though, I mean, because they're going to know that B Gaming is going to try to get out of the city as fast as possible, catching them while they're off guard, maybe? I, I wonder how many lightweights they're going to run. If they run a lot, it means they're probably going to try to set up really fast and try to focus fire with the T-54s to any tanks that come out, especially, again, focusing on the AMXs if they can find them. But I feel on the attack here, we're probably going to see an IS-3 or two IS-3s maybe even from B-Gaming to help them mm -hmm. get out of there because they're not going to run out of there against uh, run of all yeah, teams with, their, with yeah. like too many AMXs with no protection. Um, if they do you know, run lighter on the IS-3s of running only one or, or none, which is possible, then they're going to have to be a little bit slower about it, which makes them vulnerable, like you were saying, uh, to runs tactics. That is true. So yeah, I am really curious how they're going to, to do this. Um, only time will tell, Susie. Uh, I am excited that, that Run did take a map, though. Yeah. I mean, they, they have been progressively getting better as the season has been progressing. So yeah. it's uh, compared to some of their earlier games, I think they are definitely you know trying to coalesce and become better now. But we're going to see what tactics they have for us in store in game number three now. Set number three has begun. We, it is score is 1-1, one, one, and Run is now on the defense. All right, Run with two 5100s, an IS-3. And a Burt. A Burt with three lightweights, two 54s, I should say, and two IS-3s from B-Gaming, as I expected, and also the two AMXs, well, 15100 and 11390. B-Gaming seems to be running just about this, pretty much what they had before. Yeah. Um, and Just bringing an extra IS yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of a lightweight. Okay. So it's the Scyther here is going to be on the Burt. And wow, this is the most defensive I think I've ever seen Run play in uh, one of our televised matches. Here. Yeah, okay. So Run here, we can see that they have uh, split the team. We have a couple of uh, tanks up to the north and the other tanks over to the east and they are just going to position themselves to make sure that they could uh, be in the best place possible when B Gaming comes to ride into their into their little village area. Yeah. But you know what, B Gaming, this is really interesting too, they're keeping some tanks at the main base. I'm not sure if it's because they want to to shoot down that road or not, you know? I think they're expecting Run to do a very aggressive rush strategy here again, which is not not the case so far. Neat Mania and Cognac Wine are very close to each other. It looks like Super Roshi finds uh, him mm -hmm. first, and Cognac Wine being near two AMX tanks that are that know where he is is a very risky place to be. Oh dear. He actually might get picked off here. Very careful right now is Neat Mania, not even spending any of his rounds until he wants to make sure he can take the best possible engagement. They're on the opposite side of this house. I know, other. they're like right there, and obviously their sixth sense have gone off. They know that, oh gosh, and here's Cognac Wine. He's like, I'm the bigger AMX dude. And uh, his other members of Runner just going to take shots at Neat Mania, trying to get him to move from that position so that he can take some shots as well. Nipa is going to rush in there. He's taking some damage. Nipa is really good at strafing. He's able to come in there and just pull back behind the building after he takes a shot to avoid damage. Lineage is under fire here as well. Looks like 7mm took out a chunk of his health there. And Nipa still Ooh, pushing forward. Wow, yeah. Okay, so Keith just getting blasted down. Banzai attack is able to finish off that job. And it looks like we, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, may be the next one to Bite get the rammed. Dust, yep. Yeah, by two tanks. Uh, Cud trying to help his buddy out, but I don't think he's going to be in a very good position for that. Yeah, he's, he's fighting 1v2 there. We also saw Karaya um, take out another tank. He's getting very low himself, but fighting Lineage with some support. Lineage will die to one more shot. Yes, he will, and Lineage is going to drop. He has 19 HP, and soon has zero. Now it's two versus six members. Oh, I'm sorry, seven, all seven members yep, of Everyone's still alive, including oh, that gosh. T-37. Blackhawk is very low and has a long, long reload time. He's going to be taken out, and now it is going to be a 7v0 as the Scyther is literally worthless in this situation here <laughs> on the bird, and there he goes. Wow, look at that focus fire. B Gaming goes ahead and takes set number three. 2-1 lead now. I uh, kind of wish Run would use the strategy that they do. Like, I think they're comfortable on it. Sure, you sure. You know, and I think comfort above all, at least, 
it gives you more confidence and then they'll be able to play better? I have this feeling that Run is going to switch their tanks right now. They're not going to run the bird again, and they're going to run an aggressive rush strategy. After they showed a passive one, it didn't work, <laughs> they're going to switch it back again. And you can tell in B Gaming's uh, movements there and how they were set up, they were really expecting an aggressive strategy that came that did not happen. Yeah. And they were able to react and pick off important tanks with their IS-3s. Their IS-3s are godlike with their aim today, not missing anything. They're like, oh, who needs AMXs? We should probably just run all <laughs> All IS-3s. IS-3s and just, just focus single fired. Their focus down. fire is really good. The covering has been really good. And on the side of run, when these fights start to occur, the longer they go as well, especially when they're not fighting at an advantageous tank count, like say three to two or four to two the way they like to, mm-hmm. then uh, their lightweights are not focusing properly and the IS-3s are just doing way too much damage. They're being allowed to just rule that area um, like they're the kings of the map. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to have to see if in set number four they're going to change up their tanks. Uh, I have a feeling that Burt's probably going to go away. I, I think so. It was pretty a non-factor there yeah. in this past game. And um, I mean, I guess if it was someone like Opelisk, then I would just say go ahead and use Burt on every single map possible <laughs> because you're really good on it. But um, yeah, for this one, I'm not, I'm not too sure. It didn't really do much. And it, I, I, I also just personally don't think it's very good for the map. But again, Run has their own way of doing things. They don't like to play by the rules that the rest of the teams like to, to think is standard. And I really feel like that was a one-off type, let's mess with their heads a little bit, let's play defensively, <laughs> see what happens. They got demolished there, and I think it's time to go back to what works at least better for them. For better for them, right. Comfort, like you were saying, That's what very I said. I think, I think I would like to see Run, you know, do a... a a bit of a more wacky tactic because that's what we know them for and that's what's a lot of fun to watch. And that's what they've had the most success with. That's even true. though it's not it's not considered to be standard or good by most pro teams, it still works for them. It just got them a win, uh, you know, two sets ago. So I think stick with what works. All right. Well, we will see what uh, Run's going to do, either play passively or go crazy. Let's go right into game number four. All right, we are on Ruinberg, Run versus B Gaming, set number four. B Gaming is up two and Run on the defense. Oh, look, they, they're keeping the bird. Yeah, they're keeping it. 250, 100s, and an IS-3. Time to roll and out. on the side of B Gaming, running the same thing. Those two IS-3s for protection of their AMXs, as well as godlike accuracy that we saw from 7mm and Karaya. And Run is moving together here as a group. The Burt is moving to the north to get into position to shell at some of these tanks from a distance. Okay, Bonsai Attack is going to go up and pretty much meet the entire team straight up. But this is really good for B Gaming because now B Gaming knows that the entire team is going to be up there and now they can adjust their strategy accordingly. Bonsai Attack does take a bit of damage, but he's going to now just ride on back to the rest of his team to let them know what he saw. Yeah, if he can actually identify that it's all six tanks, um, of course, with the exception of the Burt being the seventh uh, you know, SPG that's out there, they can actually just try to attempt to capture this point and rush that. Because the, the tanks of Run are now going to have to rush out of the city in a very bad position. The tables are basically turned. The IS-3s are going to try to prevent this. Notice they're positioning right at this big street here, Karai yeah. and 7 mm They're in a perfect spot to deny any tanks from coming out that location. And now, Bonsai Attack is in position to spot if the tanks are coming out from the other locations so they can move themselves accordingly. They're in such great position to actually take this capture point. Bonsai Attack does see them, but they see him, and he takes a ton of damage. He's now down to 139 HP. The red, the entire team of Run Gaming, again, just moving together as a pack. They know that there's strength in numbers, and that's what they are good at. And yeah. so, like I said, it's a comfort play. They're going to go for it. Banzai Attack, on the other hand, going to run right back to the rest of his team. We're all on the east side and going to let them know the whole team is down south. Yep, and they're, uh, they're actually going to leave him on the capture point briefly here just for now. Looks like he's actually going to leave, though. On the Ooh. edge here he stays, just continuing to threaten that. And Super Roshi and Neat Mania have guns pointed down here, getting ready to stop the advance of these tanks with those autoloaders. And there goes the reset as he steps off. Karaya he does, does take a, a shot. Yep, sorry about that. Oh, that's right. I'm just I'm watching this like cognac wine. Be careful, dude. I mean, he's on a 
When sitting on a 5100 like that, you do not want to be so exposed. And he, he's got to know that there's members of B Gaming right on the other side of this capture point. And Blackhawk took a shot at an IS-3 and missed. Both of those things not a good thing. Uh, Lineage does trade some damage here. And he's trying to help protect Cognac Wine, who again is being targeted right now because like you said, he got very exposed and that's a juicy 5100 they'd love to pick off early on. Sure is. And now they, I mean, two. we had two tanks aim at cut. Keith taking a ton of damage as well. B Gaming knows that there are members of Run behind this house for sure. They're just trying to get their pretty little aims on them and shoot them down. So some important things to note is now Super Roshi is on reload for 27 more seconds right now. Keith just got focused fired really heavily. Cud is going to be next and as is we went to the 5 but wow, Bonsai attack. attack finally goes down. That's all right though, he's a T37, he did his job incredibly well. And I have to say, we see Shimip some of the least out of all the B Gaming members and he is playing like a god today. He's done so much damage, he may go down here. It looks like he will. He will go down to Cud, but I'm pretty sure that was I'm pretty sure that was worth it. So here we go. This is another fight that's going on within the outskirts of the city. But you guys can you guys can see all the aiming going on here. Everyone just trying to shoot everyone else. They lost Super Hiroshi, so this is a really good spot for run. Uh, all things considered, oh they have a tank gosh, lead. They're right around the Lineage is almost a non-factor at this point, but he's he's literally there to block to save Cognac Wine because Cognac Wine is going to be the damage dealer. He has all of his rounds ready. 7mm is back up again. His reload is up. He can just go ahead and shoot Lineage down. Oh no, but he's going to try and hit... Oh, he went. He got Cognac, Cognac Wine, Wine through the dead. window! That was perfect! I can't even believe that just happened. He shot him right through the window. Yeah. I was like, who's he aiming at? We couldn't see it on the screen, but yeah. that was a really good kill. 7mm is probably going to be taken out, yes, by Lineage, but that was that was really, really well done. Now we are on a 3v3. Yep. Blackhawk has pretty much all his shells as of right now. The problem is he doesn't have any hit points, uh, and, and yes. now he gets hit here and will be taken out by Neat Mania. Karaya helping support, and I want to point out that the Scyther, again, on the Burt has been a total non-factor in this game. Oh gosh, I totally forgot about right? him. Right, me too. I didn't even too. realize he's there. Scyther, where are you? Oh, there he is, all the way in the back. It looks like Nipa is going to try to find him and uh, take him out. It's like, man, what a waste of a spot. The lineage has been the MVP this game. He stayed alive the longest. He did an incredible amount of damage, and he was also in a really well-positioned spot, uh, all things considered. The Burt gets taken out, and B Gaming will take game four. Our final game on Ruinberg, so a 3-1 lead before we go into steps. Yep, and oh gosh, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like on steps. But, uh, yes. run better on this map, I feel, with their style. They are also on the defense first, so we'll... Actually, I, I don't even think that really matters. On, on steps, for, for I think that, that's the only map where attack defense doesn't matter almost at all, because you you basically can go either way on either side. There's nothing blocking you. There's no terrain advantage. Like, if you look at Ruinberg, for example, the map we were just on, there's a massive uh, difference in where you spawn. You mm. either spawn inside of a very, uh, I guess, heavy, narrow, yeah. heavy, big city, narrow streets, not a lot of space to move with, or, you know, you spawn on the outside where it's a very open, comparatively, a lot of little small houses right. um, to work with. So, very different spawn locations. I'm going to take a look at this map VCR and, and show you guys steps because it's very different and yes. very much wide open. All right, so steps basically, um, we're going to show you this video and uh, look at this, guys. It's just a big barren desert. Oh, it's not really a desert, I guess. And away it is. Well, it's, it's, um, it's grassy, but it's, it's like the grass is not doing so well. It's not so healthy. There's trees are sparse, okay? The there's buffalo ate it all. There's a lot of ridges and rocks on the edge. It's like, you probably don't want to find yourself out there um, if you can help it. Again, it's a wide open map, so we're going to probably see a ton of lightweights, and this is what Run likes to run with. They like to just be able to zip around and shoot at other tanks. Here we can see on the aerial view that the defense will be spawning up north. These are the two capture points, one on each side, and the attacking team to the south. And a lot of the different tactics that we've seen now is the utilization of the railroad tracks up on the northwestern side of the map, and also right where the defensive team spawns, there's actually a little ledge where uh, it's like a, I don't 
don't know how to explain it. Like a cliff. -ish? It's a small. It's a small. Um, it's a. I would say it's almost just a small hill that you can go up. That that has. It's more of a ridge. But anyway, you can go to this higher ground area, is what Susie is describing here, and you have a really good vantage point. It's hard for enemy tanks to hit you. So we usually see the defensive team arc up near their spawning location, and the attacking team try to approach the railroad tracks and set up a position there. But you do sometimes see the opposite occur. The defensive team takes the railroad tracks, the attacking right. team moves to the east. There's a lot of different strategies on this map. Usually, though, both teams pick one at the beginning, and we see how it kind of, the game evolves from there. It's not as technical as a map like Mines, for example, where there's like four different types of approach you can do and four different transition points. It's kind of like, do they go to the west or the east? Let's check each other out. Let's try to take some shots, and then we're going to rotate sides probably at the same time. It's, yeah. it's very basic. Yeah, I mean, we have seen some crazy things on this map before where there was a T-21 get pushed up onto the ledge all yeah. the way on the east side of the map, and we've seen um, just, you know, fights happening all the way down south, just completely away from the base capture. So yeah. we'll take a look. All right, looks like game is ready, so we're going to go ahead into set number five. All right, guys, we are on set number five. B Gaming is up three to one, and Run is on the defense. All right, let's look at these tanks for Run, as you might imagine. Five T-54s, and they're running the LTTB Bulldog composition, whereas, they're actually, we have the same exactly for B Gaming. Same. Yeah, wow. This is a really good composition, and we've seen it time and time again. It really, really does work. The LTTB and the Bulldog being Tier 7 yeah. light tanks, but they're both quite hefty. I mean, they can definitely hang with the big boys here, right? It's really cool because when, when you do this strategy, it basically just means you want to take a fight, and you want to have these tanks that are mobile, but also the Walker Bulldog and the LTTB especially. We've even seen teams run two LTTBs are good at fighting. They're, they're considered almost suicidal in the fight sometimes. That's why you see 7 millimeter leading the charge with it here. But here come those lightweights oh, to back man. them up. And they're yep. going to try to swing around the left side. This is some horseman-esque play right here. This is pretty nuts. It's just everyone really is going to go at it. B Gaming is pretty much playing run strategy. They're just like, you know what? We're going to face you straight on. And that's exactly what they're doing. These train tracks are the only thing keeping these tanks away from one another. Well, it looks like uh, Run getting the better end of the trades in all of the engagements they've taken so far. Although that starts to change here that as Cud gets Kud focused down. Cud is going to be the first one to go down by Shimip. And we can see here, now the tanks are finally positioning themselves so that they can try to maximize their damage. Yep, Lineage. Keith is getting focused down. Wow, look at that. Walker Bulldog go from afar. He's going to be able to just take use those rounds quickly. The reason why Run loses this fight is because B Gaming is taking their weakened tanks and just running them away as fast as possible and then only bringing them back into fire from a distance rather than what Run is doing is just simply trying to fight at close range with all of their tanks and they're not doing the best job of it. If you can pull back your weakened tanks, escape with them and do damage from a distance, you give a massive advantage and if you just fight straight up against a team that does that, you, you're, you're basically fighting a losing battle no matter what. The tanks that are doing damage from afar, you can't get to them, you can't hurt them, and you're surrounded, you're outnumbered. It's just, uh, it's just simply put better engagement there for, uh, for B Gaming. It started out better for Run because B Gaming just simply did not care about how they approached. They approached <laughs> really haphazardly. Like, if Run had approached that way, they would have done a lot better, but okay. because they're, they're better at it, but B Gaming took the better fight. And it looked like they were just confident that that was how the game was going to go. Yeah, I think they they knew how Run was going to, to run. This, I think they were just like, we're just mechanically better than you. We're going to pull our weakened tanks back, and we're going to beat you in this fight no matter how it happens. You're also going to come and fight us because you're Run. So we're going to run the same tank lineup as you and, and take this fight. Strategically, smart choice by uh, B Gaming. And I feel like Run just needs to split their tanks off when they take damage, try mm -hmm. to protect those a little bit better. Um, we saw Nipa pull back uh, on the Bulldog, I believe it was. Karaya did the same, just pulling out of the fight when you get down below 50 hit points. If they chase you, that's great. They're distracted. Maybe they kill you, but it's a risk. If they don't kill you, you turn around and from a distance take safe shots. Yes, and that's exactly what we saw B Gaming do. I like told you uh, they had the Walker Bulldog just from a distance, pulled all the way out and then started shooting. And he was still a part of the fight and did an incredible amount of damage. So. 
Oh, B Gaming, man, still beating Run at their own game. We're going to have to go into game number six and see uh, if Run can win another game. Set number six, B Gaming up four, Run has won. We're going to see if they can take another map from them. If not, this is going to be the end of the series. Same tank lineups for both teams, no change. And obviously same sides. This is just the second game on steps that we've seen so far. Taking a look at Run's formation here. Oh, They're going gosh. the opposite way this time. They are. They are just going to all pack together, however. Usually we're going to see you know, a team just kind of spread out, fan out around this area right now that you see run on the mini-map and position themselves in a way where they can cover all bases. But no, this team is just going to go all together. While B Gaming, again, yeah, they're traveling as a pack too, but they're just going to go up the other side. In fact, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to try to cap this. I, that's exactly what I was going to say. This is a better position for B Gaming because they have the ability to capture and run is not going to be well equipped to defend this. It's going to take them a while to get into position. Okay, don't pump into each other. <laughs> you guys are on the same team. Um, they're not going to threaten it yet because they don't want B Gaming to know, or rather, they don't want Run to know where they are just yet. They're trying to make sure they get in a better position if Run's about to go through the middle and do something crazy suicidal. And now I think they're realizing, oh, they're just going to come through here. Instead of forcing the capture point issue, let's just take a better fight like we did last game. Look at the position. They're already starting to split off to make sure everyone can get a good shot. Wow, yeah, they're utilizing the rocks and the terrain for their advantage here. You could see that they want to take the fight, but they want to be covered as well. Cognac One is going to be the first one, the first casualty of the game here. And I don't know if that's going to be enough for her, him to be able to uh, hide behind those bushes. Well, he survives for now, but he's not going to be poking out anytime soon. Meanwhile, Keith takes some damage as well, and B Gaming just in a superior position here. No kills just yet for either team, though, which is really important because this could be turned around in just a second if either team makes a big mistake. Lineage now, I mean, he's. Ooh, he Nipa. Yeah, he's on a pretty long cooldown there. And Nipa is going to just threaten the capture here, so it's going to force Run to move. Eventually, they still have a lot of time. The Scyther is moving down with that LTTB. Better hope no one sees him or he is going to get focused. Ooh, I like this. Lineage moving over with Keith. Lineage's reload is nearly completed. Seven seconds to go on that. They're trying to do a little bit of a flank here with the LTTB distracting. And then they're coming around the left side. Let's see if they can get some good shots off as they poke around the edge of this hill. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Wow. You Keith. can see all the aiming, the, the, the animation for that. You guys can see what the what the players are actually doing here. Sure. But right now, it looks like B Gaming is going to be in a much better position, just hiding behind the terrain. Like I said, they have the, the rocks and they have the slight incline of the steps. Yeah, and uh, again, a better fight here for B Gaming so far. The Scyther wow. does take out Nipa and Neep Mania, Mania goes out as well. Go down, but he does do quite a bit of damage onto Lineage before he does. And there are four tanks remaining for Run at this moment. Make that two tanks remaining. And it looks like B Gaming once again is able to outmaneuver and outposition themselves to, uh, to victory. Yep. Scyther will be the last to fall. Kind of an odd case. The LTTV goes down last. But B Gaming takes it, and they will take the series 5 1. Very good play. And that last game, it was just a, an issue of Run deciding that they would try to go for those kills a bit desperately, but they gave up all of their position as a result of it. They really They got did. the kills, but then they lost the fight. Yeah, I think if they just positioned themselves better so that they wouldn't take as much damage, it could have worked out a little bit differently, but it was a little haphazard. And uh, B Gaming just, um, I mean, they, they do seem to be the stronger team here. Yeah, definitely so. Taking that 5-1, uh, Braun only taking that one game with their style. Uh, but not enough for them to get a dent. So this is really important for B Gaming, though, trying to get back up there with those top two teams. Absolutely. Okay, well, that was a very quick first series, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that Run was able to take a win. But we're going to take a 10-minute break now, and when we come back, we will have for you Elon Gaming versus Immortals.